Good morning. Have we had some great chats this morning already? We've had some good discussions. I don't really like standing behind the lectern, so I'm not going to. Uh, my name is Glenn McIntyre. I am the Managing Director of Lifestyle Therapies and Training Solutions. We call it LTTS for short, so much easier. Please don't try and remember the big name, just think LTTS. I am an occupational therapist. I've also done further training, so I've got multiple allied health degrees, and I've got leadership degrees as well, but we don't need to discuss any of those. This morning we're talking about transformation and how LTTS has gone on a journey in the last few years to transform its model of service. Before we talk about some of that journey in the next 10 minutes, I've only got 10 minutes, I'll try not to go over time, I just wanted to share about a, transform, a transformation that I experienced uh, when I was working at one of the clinics. So I was uh, coming home after a day of work, I was uh, basically consulting to a mine site and I was driving home coming home from a, a day of work and I drove over the railway station and the house that I lived in at the time in this rural town was diagonally opposite the medical centre in that town. So as I drove and I was almost about to pull into my driveway, I saw this young mother with a disabled child that she was literally, you could see she was struggling to get into her car. And so I pulled into my driveway and I thought, I'm an occupational therapist, I can help with that. So I walked over to this lady and by the time I got there, she was now trying to pick up this wheelchair and get this little, well it wasn't little, but it was very heavy wheelchair into her car. And as I walked up I said, excuse me, do you need some help? Um, look, I'm happy to give you a hand and get that wheelchair into the car for you. And she looked at me and she said these, these words and she said, look, thank you very much for offering, but no. And the reason why I don't want you to help me is because I've got to learn to do this myself. There is no one else around here that can help me. There is no one else that I can access for help. That started a journey for LTTS. So when I, when I experienced that introduction or that, that discussion with that lady, I realized I'd been living in that community for five years, in that rural community providing services in a model that didn't allow the community to access it, in a model that didn't actually provide good quality health to the community that I was a part of. And so I took that and I took that lesson and I went back to our, our leadership team and I said, what do we need to change? We are in communities all across Queensland and we're not impacting the actual communities in the healthcare that we want to impact. We're not engaging those communities, we're not making the change, we're not actually consumer driven. We've been saying we are, but we're actually not. Our leadership team came up with basically three areas that we needed to change and we needed to change very quickly to make the changes that we wanted to make in those communities. And those are the three areas I'm going to share today. I'm going to talk about the three areas. I'm going to talk about the key ones that we think will still be impacting two years, five years and ten years down the track because we think the transformation is going to continue. It's only going to speed up and it's our responsibility as healthcare providers to make that change and to make it quickly. So basically one of those areas that we looked at was this thing called multi-funded services. It's much easier to have three dot points than it is to have our three um, paragraphs around each of those things. Uh, but basically LTTS now, their new mission is to bring quality allied healthcare to rural and remote Queensland and Australia. That is our goal, that is our purpose, that is why we exist. If that's our goal, how do we achieve that? We know that in the last couple of years there was the, the global financial crisis, then there's reduced funding, then there's increased expectations on less funding, and then there's access to how do we move and how do we connect with those groups. Well, what we identified was that we needed to create this multi-funded model. And the multi-funded model, I don't just mean, you know, two or three or four funding lines or funding bodies that will provide money to your services, for example, Medicare, but I'm actually talking about many, many streams of funding and connections and relationships with groups that will make the service sustainable. Not in a way that if Medicare drops off or, or if um, the grant that you got from Department of Health and Aging drops away, that you're now going to have to find a new way to make that sustainable. What we're trying to do is actually look at how do we make it sustainable across the board, no matter what inputs come in and what outputs go out. Currently we have 27 different streams of funding. So we don't use 27 buckets of funding. We probably have closer to 50 of those, but we have 27 different streams of funding. So 27 different areas of where our funding can come from. And we had to think quite laterally. 
We had to think outside the box. There wasn't enough money in healthcare to provide health to remote Queensland, to the Gulf, to the Cape. There just wasn't enough money in the health, in the health spectrum. So we actually started looking at what about Department of Education? What about innovation? What about Department of Training? We got some funding from Department of Tourism because what they're looking for is they're looking for innovative models and they see how that health can impact the tourist attraction of that town or of that community. One of the very key things about uh, identifying multi-funding uh, opportunities is the relationships and the collaboration. We've talked about that so much. But the relationships and the collaboration are extremely key in actually working together to make these opportunities come to pass, come to fruition. So we, before I came here today, because I knew I was going to be presenting, I had a look at all of our collaborators. So these are from big organisations, departments, all the way down to that single OT or that single physiotherapist in the communities that we work in that we connect with and support and grow and cross-refer and subcontract, so all those different levels. We had 317 collaborators. Two years ago, we had two. We made a massive change, a massive goal in the last two years to change how we did our business. And in that change, we identified that people and relationships were key. Consumers were so key to what we do as healthcare professionals. So we go home at night because we've made a difference in one person's life. Two years ago, we were working out of 17 communities in Queensland. We are now working in 68 communities and we run over 79 to 81 clinics. We've just got a couple more that haven't quite got off yet. But that is what has happened in the last two years for us. That has been a massive change from working in 17 communities to now nearly 70 communities. A huge change. A lot of it comes down to this group here. This is actually only one of our three teams. Uh, this is our far north team. Some of them are actually in the building and in the room this morning. They're over at that table smiling, trying to hide. But this is basically our multi-disc team here. We have a mix of OTs, speeches, physios, only one, uh, psychologists. We have uh, admin. We have research and development. We have management. This is one team that we have that covers our far north Queensland uh, areas of service. This team's culture is very, very, very important. Two years ago, well, three years ago, really, we were just occupational therapists. As we started branching out into providing those community-based services into the new communities that we were working with, we identified there was no physio on the ground. There was no psychologist that could do that crisis care management or that support. There was no clinical psych that could actually help with that diagnosis and that connection to a psychiatrist and a pediatrician. They just weren't there. And so rather than, um, rather than us trying to figure out, well, how do we connect to, uh, to an alternate service or how do we bring an alternate service in, and we've done that in some cases because we find collaboration is very important, but we've also picked up some additional team members. And so we've turned into this multidisciplinary group, which has brought challenges of its own. But we have a team who actually loves the idea of working in their local communities. They're actually focused, and this is the mantra that the team uses. We impact one individual, which then impacts one family, which then impacts one little part of that community, which then impacts one community, and then one region. This is what this team talks about every time they connect. Yes, we're only impacting one life, but that will impact a family. The whole multidisciplinary approach was created because we need a team culture that was so focused on working in the community and making those changes so focused on owning that community, whether they lived there or whether they didn't, whether they were locals, whether they were fly in, fly out, or drive in, drive out. Multi-disc is one area that we started looking into. <coughs> Multi-disc can also be with those collaborative partners. I know there's people in the room here that we collaborate with in various towns. Um, there, was, there was a lady I was speaking to that we work with their team. Um, our whole goal is to try and bring a whole multi-disc integrated approach. That brings the whole issue of um, referral pathways and sharing of some of our information. The third area that we looked at was this multi-location of services. So we understood that I was working in a community and I was working with a specific segment of that community but I wasn't actually impacting the whole of that community. 
So when we talk about multi-location services, we're not just saying, let's go add a new community to our list. That's not what we mean by multi-location. What we mean is we need to go to where the need is. If we know that there are clients that are sitting in a kindergarten or a prep, we actually need to go there. If we know that there are clients that are sitting on an island that can't access these services and they can't get access to that telehealth model or that, that video health that they need, we need to go there. One of the greatest uh, stories that my site came in and showed me was we were working in a very, very remote uh, community. Uh, it was a great community. I, I loved it. I'm born and bred Winton, so I'm used to open plains, red dirt. We're working in a community with very similar outlook. I loved it. It felt like I was going home again. And I remember walking out of a classroom after working with a child, and I looked over to the playground and I saw my psychologist, who was getting on in years, and he was sitting in the sandpit. And all I could see was this psychologist sitting in a sandpit, and I'm thinking, oh no, it's been a tough day. <laughs> He's not rocking in a corner. He's actually going and trying to hide in the sand. So I start walking over, and as I'm walking over to him, I suddenly see three other heads to his right. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And as I got closer, I saw two more heads. There was, there was three kids on his right-hand side, and they were sort of kneeling, sitting down, and there was two kids that were literally lying down. And as I walked over there, um, they, all, they all started being quiet, and they said, Sir, um, should we talk to this man? They were talking to the psychologist. And he's like, yeah, yeah, he's with me. He's, he's good. He's great. And they're like, oh, okay. Man, we were talking about some heavy stuff, is what they told me. Here was my psychologist having a group social and emotional session sitting in a sandpit with five grade four boys. Has it, does anyone have any five, grade five boys here? Do they actually talk? We sat there for another hour and they were sharing all the issues they were struggling with in that school. They were sharing the fact that they were bullied. They were sharing the fact that they were so concerned about Mr. G who was another boy, because they thought that he was getting bullied at home. That's their wording that they used. They were so concerned about the fact that some of their friends weren't going to bed until 1 a.m. in the morning. Like these whole discussions were coming up out of 10, 11 year old boys, purely because our psychologist decided the only way he could get these boys to talk was to go play in the sandpit with them. That is what it means to be a multi-location service. We need to go to where the, the actual clients are. We need to meet them in their environment. We actually need to go and say, look, we understand where you feel safe. We want to, would you invite us into your safe area so that we can connect and then we can understand and then we can start working together. That whole consumer driven model. Three years ago, we operated out of five clinics. We expected everyone to come to us. That's fairly standard. I walk around and I see a lot of allied health professionals that sit in their clinics, waiting for people to come to them. How many of us have actually gone out to where those people are? How many of us have identified that that's actually where the market is? If we talk about systems and business and efficiency, if I go to my marketing consultant, he says to me, you need to go to where your niche is. As health professionals, we actually need to identify our niche and go to where that niche is. That's the third part of where we started our, or where we changed our strategy. The other bit that I want to talk about, I didn't mean to put that third photo in. The other thing that I wanted to actually share is this whole idea about technology. This has been a massive journey for us. Two and a half years ago, we were paper-based. Do you remember lugging around all those files in those manila, and then you had that three briefcases of files, and you had this one backpack of a set of clothes? Has anyone else had that experience? because I definitely have, and they're heavy, and you're lugging them, and we decided that if we were going to do this change, if we were going to actually meet community where they were and give consumers what they're actually looking for, we needed to implement technology. For a year, we have not used paper-based forms. We refuse to. On that table over there, I have a laptop. That is my whole office. I can go anywhere I want with one laptop. It has all the forms I need to complete for all my clients. It has all my case files. It has all my connections. I can speak to people through my laptop. That is something that we've started doing because we need to integrate that technology support. As we move forward, we need to look at um, how do we connect with our consumers, not just to remind them with those texts of their appointments, but how do we connect with them in a way that they can text us and go, I have this concern, 
and you can text them and say, hey, go on to here and we'll, we'll create a, a hangout. Does anyone know what an online hangout is? Online hangouts are the best thing that happened to our business. So we basically, if we get a text, we can flick them to the hangout and here we are connecting with them, chatting, we can talk to them, we can actually video conference them off a hangout. Google, it's brilliant. So this whole integrated technology is something that we've used not as a strategy, but as an overarching that we've now pinned our strategy into. And we think there's gonna be massive changes moving forward. So we're looking at, uh, we've actually got two consultants that come in and they're doing a whole lot of our technology support stuff. We need to start thinking, how do we, as a group, move from that whole clinic-based, location-based, paper-based process? That's what we changed. And now what we've been able to do is reinvent, actually in creating impact in the communities that we work in. You know, when we go into a community and they smile and they greet us and they come and give us a hug, I know that we are making a difference in that community. I know that we've made a difference to one person, to one family, to one community. Thank you very much.